Karuku district ventures into new farming project. Arena station opens new medical facility. And SP hunters set to travel to Brisbane. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Sunday's news. Locals in Karuku district are exploring the potential of developing a Balbanian project, a project that has the support of the Karuku Hiri District Development Authority. Karuku Hiri MP Peter Isoaimo officially launched the Onion project at the groundbreaking ceremony recently. Karuku Hiri MP Peter Isoaimo pledged to support the Inawi Bulb Onion Agri Group so that they can venture into agriculture. An initiative under its agriculture program embarked to help locals generate an income. He says people must support such initiative. And for this one here, I'm proud to announce that I will also um, um, uh, pledge a sum of 20,000 kina to kickstart this project. Please ensure these funds are paid out so our farmers can get to work. The member has also pledged to allocate the space in the administration building for the women's micro bank to operate in and serve its people of Kairu Kuhiri with banking and financial services, a partnership to assist locals access banking services. All these have been tied down in the district plan. In the presence of my CEO, I think I made a commitment also that the banks can, can operate out of the admin building for financial banking services. That commitment is still open. Sister Felicia can find space and move in together with my women's rep. Women's Microbank CEO Mr. Das also emphasized about the wise usage of money and how the bank will step in to assist. He says this is an opportunity for the locals. If you are getting any support from honorable member or anybody, then how we can use that money and then we as bank, we can give you small loans to create that you know, culture of credit and at the same time create the culture of savings. Alexis Sengi, National MTV News. A delegation of members of the Morbe Provincial Administration led by the Morbe Governor have begun discussions with the Kainantu Mine to see how Morbe people within the mine's impact boundaries can benefit from the mine. Governor Ginsen Saunu and other members of the PEC travelled to the mine site where they met with the mine management. While Morbe is on the outer reaches of the mine impact area, villages are still being affected by the operations. The provincial administration is examining the boundaries and will make a statement soon. The Kairuku Hiri district has built an isolation facility at Berena Station as a proactive measure against COVID-19. It caused the DDA a sum of over 300,000 kina to complete this facility. Central is one of the provinces in country to report positive cases of COVID-19 since the outbreak last April. Cadet journalist student Alexia Sengi with this story. Over 100 people at the Berena station witnessed the opening of their new isolation centre. During the opening of the centre, Kairukuhiri MP Peter Isoaimo says he encouraged the people to look after their new facility. And on record, I am proud to have gone to all the 112 wards in Kairukuhiri. That's a history in itself. I've gone everywhere. I use all mode of transportation. For the Hiri West Coastline people, I got to get out to the sea and go by motorized dinghies. To come into Berena and rural villages, or Waimakiori areas, I come by road. Kairuku Hiri is one of the largest districts in the central province. Service delivery to both districts has been a great challenge. However, the MP has managed to visit his electorate and plan for service delivery. Governments all together. We have Kairuku district to the west here and the Hiri district that surrounds the city of Port Mosby. 
Kayoko district comprises of tribes of people in Kuni, Mekeo Roro, the North Mekeos, Naras, and Gabari people. And you have the Hiri district people who are ethnically Motu Koitabuans. Some of them live in NCD. All the other Motu Koitabuans also live in Hiri district of Kayoko Hiri electorate. Then you have the Koyaris, and you have the Doras, and of course, you have the Papua New Guinea population that's now springing up to live after 14 miles onwards to 17 miles. Then from Lalopia. Yeah. So that's Kairukuhiri. So if anyone thinks all is well and funding is enough for everybody, let me t honestly tell you as the member, it's not. Of all the services he intends to make in his electorate, he says health is the number one priority. It is absolutely necessary we treat our health as number one priority because your health, our health is our wealth as well. Since Kairukuhiri is too large to cater for with the limited funds, the member has been advocating and pushing for the split in electorate so that Kairuku and Hiri can become their own districts. I've been advocating since 2014 when I took office through a by-election to split this electorate of Kairuku and Hiri. And I'm, I'm happy to announce that um, um, I've managed to convince as many members of parliament as I could. Alexis Sengi, National MTV News. Pogera Gold Mine in Enga has provided accommodation for 10 final year nursing students while they undergo practical work at the Pogera District Hospital. The nursing students, accompanied by their instructor, Dr. Jarek Lagansin, will be living in three houses that belong to Developer Barrack New Guinea Limited. Hospital General Surgeon and Acting Medical Superintendent Dr. Jerry Hogo, who initiated the request for accommodation, is thankful for the support from Barrack. They are the fourth batch that will graduate from the Enga Nursing College located at Sopas. Their four weeks of practical will conclude on the first week of February. Meanwhile, the Pogera mine remains closed while no good negotiations on developing the mine continue at the political level. Members of the PNGDF 1st Royal Pacific Islands Regiment have conducted a medical capability task in Obo Village, Middlefly District. This included medical assistance to children in Obo and border patrol along the southern PNG Indonesian border. Part of the responsibility for the PNGDF on patrol at the border is to ensure there are no traditional border crossings due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The capability exercise was conducted by one RPIR support company that is currently stationed in Kyunga. The exercise was carried out over five days from the 8th to the 13th of this month. The abolishment of the Border Development Authority in 2018 saw the closure of this office and its subsidiary PNG Maritime Transport Limited with all staff left jobless. While the affected employees and civil servants of BDA were paid out following this closure, 16 staff working for its subsidiary were not paid a single dime except for their general manager who got paid out with the rest of the BDA staff. Tonight we take a closer look at how this government decision has affected these 16 employees, some of whom have found shelter on the abandoned ships while waiting for the government to pay them their dues. Border Development Authority was established by an Act of Parliament in 2008. It was created by the Somare government to coordinate development activities in all border provinces and primarily focused on Sundown, Western, Manus, New Island, Milan Bay and the autonomous region of Bougainville. However, this office was abolished in 2018 by the O'Neill government on reasons that it had lost focus and was not carrying out its mandated functions. 
The cabinet then directed the finance department to conduct an audit of the BDA assets and liabilities, including its subsidiary, the PNG Maritime Transport Limited. The PNG Maritime Transport Limited was established by the authority under the Companies Act, with BDA being the sole shareholder. The personal management department was directed to deal with the human resource matters in relation to BDA staff. NEC decision number 359 of 2018 also gave directions to the Department of Treasury to identify and allocate funds to meet the costs associated with the redundancy of BDA staff. These are the BDA proper staff being still on the payroll from December 2018 to October 2019 when they were all paid off with their final entitlements. Unfortunately, 16 employees of BDA subsidiary PNG Maritime Transport Limited were put off from payroll straight after the closure of the office in December 2018 and were never paid their final entitlements to date. Without pay for two years since later 2018 up to now. We still consider ourselves as uh, employees uh, because we have never been paid, we have never been notified uh, whether or not uh, we are still employed or we have been sacked or we have been a police, we have never been paid out. And so we still consider ourselves as we are still employees. Legally we are still employees of the PNG Maritime Transfer Limited and uh, Border Development Authority. The question is why pay all BDA staff and leaving them out? Although a subsidiary, the payroll and HR functions were all done by the office of BDA and these 16 do not understand why they were singled out from the rest of the BDA staff. And interestingly, their general manager was on payroll until October 2019, when he was also paid out his final entitlements with the rest of the BDA staff. One HR, one, our general manager was paid with, together with the BDA, BDA proper people. Our general manager got paid out and uh, it left all of us, all me and my brother here, all of us in limbo. general manager. Why is he why he is paid and not his self? You know, yeah. we, we we want to see the logic. He is paid. You know, we are in the same office. You know, we are his boss. He is our boss. You know, um, um, uh, uh, looking after being able to transport the ships out there. And why is paid and not us? The government department's task to ensure the process of abolishing BDA and its subsidiary and liquidating its assets has never settled these 16 staff. Uh, finance department, the uh, prime minister's department, other line agencies, the state solicitor, uh, they, they've directed them to um, uh, uh, liquidate border development of uh, PNG Maritime Transport. They were, they were, there's a specific uh, direction. Okay, without following that, without abolishing um, PNG Maritime Transport Limited, they went ahead and abolished border development. Order. So there is a very big, uh, very big legal uh, crisis here. Uh, PNG Maritime Transport was supposed to be liquidated. It was they were supposed to pay us out. All our assets were supposed to be sold out before abolishing border development authority. While border development authority was still in existence, they were supposed to uh, do away with uh, its uh, subsidiary. Okay, that didn't happen, and so. They went ahead, well, as soon as they abolished Border Development Authority, okay, PNG Maritime Transport still living in a dead animal. It's still living in a dead animal, so this is a legal crisis. The affected employees, through their spokespersons, have knocked on the doors of these government departments ear in, ear out, to no avail. They have been continuously referred to different departments and government agencies, or just turned a deaf ear to the pleas of these 16. I've, I've approached the state solicitor's office, written several letters. I go there almost like every once in a month, or two, twice a month. I go twice a month, uh, checked, I've given up two years. And so I have people suffering. We have uh, five, six dependents per family. The employees have also had to endure hardships to access their super fund. The huge super fund requirements are that when you are finishing from another an employer, 
And if you're not going to work for a certain months or if you're 12 months, then if you're on withdrawal, you get to present that letter, official letter from the employer. You know, that qualifies you to uh, claim your contributions or whatever it is. You know, in here, it's like a double punishment. We didn't get our pay. They quit our payroll without any form of, you know, salaries are not paid and not entitlement, entitlements are not paid. And super funds. We PNG Maritime Transport Limited owned seven ships bought by BDA at an approximately 27 million kina. And that's where these 16 employees worked. Those ships are now rusting away on the seas of Medang and Port Mosby. MV Buka and MV Gloucester are docked in seas near Napanapa outside Port Mosby, with the latter almost sinking. These two ships have been vandalized and stripped off by thieves. MV Milan Base docked in a private shipping yard also near Napa Napa and two former employees still live on it and provide security to this state asset in fear of it being vandalized like its sisters MV Buka and MV Gloucester. They have also found shelter on this ship since the abolishment of BDA. Stephen Jolly and Andrew Sige, crew members of this ship lived on after the closure of this business. In 2019, Stephen found a job as a motorman with a shipping company and left Andrew behind, promising to help support him with his basic needs. Talk to Andrew. He got one more opportunity or something, and he come. So, by me, let him use stop. By me, let him use stop. Look out in million dollars. Now, me by go walk long. In Tangu Tama, and one blow way road long way. Me look look long. We can look out in the middle of one time now, online from the middle of the place. So, we go, we go start work on this little bats, come, coming up now. And we... Andrew stays on the ship and says he has a family in Lay and has been asked to return home. But he says he can't return without his entitlements. Family is not a lot day. Me family man too. Yeah. Me got five black kids. Mm. All stuff. All two family kids in Bagara. Now I'm a staff, now all family too is staff or someone. I'm a family too is staff. 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 I'm a all uh, management team from Mipla, PS one them Dolph. I believe all is still negotiate yet one them all authorities. Long look look long. Top money must cut look save long. Uh, Mipla who said all workman ball where Mipla he pin look out him all assets ball and Mipla stuff. With these state properties now slowly rusting away, experts also need to assess the risks these ships may pose to the marine environment where they are docked. Calls have been made to the PNG Ports Corporation or relevant authorities to engage companies that do salvaging to properly isolate these ships. For now, the 16 employees remain awful and will keep pursuing their matter in the hope of receiving some closure. From the seven ships, four are docked in waters of Medang, while three in Port Mosby. And in both locations, former employees have found shelter and live on it, while at the same time protecting these state properties from being vandalized. Sadly, one employee, a captain of one of the ships, passed away while waiting for his final entitlements and has left behind a family who is also waiting with others for their father's dues. MTV requested for an interview with the Secretary for Finance, Dr. Ken Nangan, regarding this, as this department was tasked to add a committee to ensure the process of abolishing BDA and liquidating its assets was complete. However, the Secretary has not responded to any one of the messages despite reading it. And your guys sports is next. Fidelis Sukina will join you with the details after the break. Two Kai Sports. Right. 
Good night and welcome to Trukai Sports. TSP PNG Hunters are set to leave on the 31st of this month to Brisbane and will be based in the Gold Coast. With the final team announced on Monday this week, they still have to contend with the COVID-19 pandemic control measures in Australia, especially in Queensland, where they will be staying. Stanley Hondina, acting CEO of Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League, gave an update this week. With the SPPNG Hunters travelling squad to Queensland, Australia, named on Monday, the team is set to travel on the 31st of this month. Papua New Guinea Rugby Football League acting CEO Stanley Hondina said they worked overtime during the festive season in 2020 to ensure things progressed well for the team's relocation. I'm happy about QRL. Uh, defeat the Australian High Commission, the Home Office, Queensland Health, and, and my team at the PNG RFL headquarters. We've been having, we are into work plan number 20 now. You can imagine 20 meetings over the Christmas and New Year. Some of us didn't take the breaks because we had to see this thing happening and we had to see our team still being in the competitions. The team will be settling in their new location in the Gold Coast. Hondina said there is still some areas the team needs final approval from the Australian authorities. They'll be staying at the Runaway Bay in Gold Coast. Uh, as the progress have happened, and this, this forum was advised when we had the last media conference the other time, uh, making other announcements, there's still a bit of moving parts to it. It is, it is so fragile, especially with the pandemic happening. Our quarantine plan that has been submitted uh, to the Queensland Health, uh, pending that approval, the charter and few other things are hanging on that, so we are hoping that it will get through. Women's football returned to Port Mosby with round four of the Women's National Soccer League. The Southern Conference matches saw big wins in Port Mosby with Port Mosby FC and NCD Hakari United respectively. The Southern Conference of the Women's National Soccer League resumed this weekend after a break over the festive period as the six teams returned to the PNG Football Stadium to get the ball rolling on the second half of the season. The second game in round four saw a dominant performance by Port Mosby City FC, who thumped Amona FC five goals to one. Port Mosby City FC were in full control of the match with a lion's share of possession, while the defense restricted Amona FC to a single goal. We were okay in terms of fitness and uh, game skills, everything we're good. We just um, need to improve on that uh, and our finishing off. We're just encouraging each other and just trusting one another, telling the young ones to have confidence in themselves and that's all. The win puts Pom City FC in third place on the Southern Conference standings with six points, while FC Genesis tops the ladder with 12 points, followed by NCD Hikari United FC, who is second on 10 points. In other results in round four, conference leaders Genesis FC defeated NCD FC 1-0 while NCD Akari United belted Palm City Academy nine goals to nil. Axel Lovai, Trukai Sports. And that story wraps up Trukai Sports, the weather forecast for the next 24 hours when we come back. Bye for now. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Trukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Partly cloudy with a chance of afternoon and evening thunderstorms in Port Moresby. Mostly cloudy with some rain showers tonight in Daru. Mostly fine weather in Kerama and Alata. Mostly cloudy with afternoon showers in Popandita. In the Mombasa region, mostly fine, becoming partly cloudy with a chance of few showers tonight in Lee. Mostly fine though, partly cloudy in Medang and mostly fine weather in Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine though, partly cloudy in Lorangao, Kokoporabao, Kavieng and Kimbe and mostly fine weather in Buka. And in the Highlands region, mostly fine though, partly cloudy in Mount Hagen, mostly fine weather in Goroka and Kundiawa, and cloudy with afternoon rain showers in Mendi and Wabeg. 
Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait to Daru and Kiwai Islands to Kerama and Yule Island to Hood Point to Samari Island with waters of eastern and western Milne Islands with waters of Samari Island and East Cape to Cape Fogel through Huen Gulf to Finchhafen including waters of Finchhafen through VTRs and Dampier Straits to CRC and Long Islands with waters of Manus and its western group of islands also with waters of New Ireland to Bougainville and with waters of east and west New Britain seas of 0.5 to 1.5 meters waters of Long Island to Karkar Island and we were to Aitape to the northern PNG Indonesian border seas of 0.5 to 1.3 meters A look at the ocean forecast for PNG areas in the Coral Sea. Seas moderate with southwest winds of 15 to 20 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas slight to moderate with northeasterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, seas slight to moderate with easterly winds at 10 to 20 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, seas moderate to rough with northeast to easterly winds at 15 to 24 knots. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for Sunday, 17th of January 2021. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing. Good night.